I have not done a video on the Dam Buster. If you really want me to cover it, uh, thumb up the first person who comments Dam, uh, comments the Dam Buster because I would like to get a video on that done. I just need a little bit of motivation. Okay, I, I guess we're talking about the Dam Buster. I was not aware that so many people are still interested in this really, really old weapon, but... I guess it has gotten a little bit of a resurgence. Let's look at some math. You know, welcome to Beast Channel. Today we, we were going to do that. No, I promise it won't be that intensive. But there are a couple of important figures to note. First off, they changed a lot of weapons. Thank you to Dyson for, you know, compiling all of this. If you haven't heard about the 12.0 update, then again, you might be new to the channel. But the Dam Buster is one of the weapons that got a slight damage buff. It went from a base 488 damage to a base, you know, 544. If you need any frame of reference, here are all of the other launchers. The Santa's Little Helper, Power. Powerhouse 625, Storm King's Wrath hits for 771, so the Storm King's Wrath critting for like 1.8 million in the uh, high end zones there, that gives you a bit of a frame of reference. The Dam Buster is no slouch, but it's not a top contender for the damage slot, so why are we talking about it? Well, it's a Dam Buster because of the impact. That is how we are sorted on Fortnite DB here. That is, uh, that is a parameter for all of this. The Metal Marauder is ranked very, very high. The Sod Buster, the new rocket, does come in close behind, but after all of these years, the Dam Buster remains to be, and the purple variant for that matter, the number one impact weapon in the game. Now, there's also a hidden value, uh, knockback. I'm not as familiar with all of this. It's really not something I'm terribly interested in because impact and knockback is only useful in like the end game. If you're an endurance player, you value this stuff like crazy because when you're facing 200 plus power level smashers in those zones. Well, honestly, honestly, I'll say higher than that even because in the 164 players, we deal with power level 250 smashers and they're killable. You know, you can handle them. They're not fun, but if you have a proper team of maxed out players or 130 players, you can deal with it. It's just more easy typically to just launch them off the side of a cliff like I did here. And that's basically what the Dam Buster is for. I'm going to scroll all the way down and show that it has a 7,354 impact, but there is a massive, massive asterisk to that. Let's head over here. Now, perks will be talked about later. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to show what I'm running on my copy here, but this is not the end of the video. Trust me. I want to talk about this weapon in detail, so I'm going to have to show you what's going on here. We have a 45,600, you can see the number, impact on my my screen right now and we're doing about you know a quarter of a million damage which is pretty standard if lower than normal i'm not going to look at the deatomizer because it's a little bit different but again for a frame of reference the uh, storm king's wrath perked with a crit build is hitting for about the same amount of damage but you got to note that it's critting for a lot of damage the damage build is doing 344,000. and then i want to just show one more example just to give you guys a little bit of you know uh, bearing on where this lands, the bazooka, which is textured wonderfully as I'm recording this, hits for about 170,000. You know, it's a bit of a lower range, um, lower range rocket launcher right now. You know what? Actually, just because I'm recording this during the Halloween season, let's look at the jackal launcher as well. Again, about a quarter million. Now, enough of all that. What I'm saying is, it hits for a decent amount of damage. I also want to add before we get too far into it that I am using a conventional bow loadout because I like the Xenon bow and I really don't like to use specific rocket loadouts when I'm using a rocket because typically rockets are a secondary and it's not really worth it to run Demolition as Penny or something. And I also address this because my Stoneheart Farah is maxed and supercharged all the way to full. It shouldn't make that much of a difference, but obviously you can look at the damage on your weapon and uh, compare and contrast based on my footage. You know, 236,000 is respectable you'll see that it's eliminating most of the baby enemies very easily but if anything it's it's actually doing more work in scattering enemies on the encampment and that's kind of where the problem lies its impact is so high at 45,000 plus and it's really just knocking enemies around it's moving them out of the way it's not really eliminating much and that's where the dam buster is very very easy it's just a weapon that you can power up literally not even care about the perks seriously you can just run reload or double reload and only knock around enemies Enemies. I was very fortunate in my copy where I get the stunning and knocking back deals extra damage. That is not the copy I was using. I can't show you the copy I was using because it broke while I was recording, but I think it was a double damage, reload damage to miss monsters. It's basically perked the same way that I have it, and I prefer to keep my launchers physical. Again, this is not the stage where we're talking about the perks. I'm saying if you're only knocking enemies around, it really doesn't even matter, and this is where I come in with the other thing, you know, the other key, and that's why I mentioned the impact so early is that it doesn't have any impact perks whatsoever. 
you saw the runner-up was the Sodbuster. And the, uh, let me actually click over here. The Sodbuster and the Metal Marauder, those weapons actually have impact perks. In fact, the Sodbuster and I believe the Metal Marauder as well, both have quadruple impact perk options. Meaning if you're really, really serious about knocking enemies around, I'm going to go ahead and refer you to those videos down in the description below, except that they're not really going to talk about impact. Just run impact on those. Uh, yeah, so I'm just double checking while I'm talking here that the Metal Marauder has three impact and the Sodbuster has four impact perks, which again is different than knockback. Knockback is very high on the damn buster. I have been told that the sod buster will send enemies flying like crazy. If you can imagine that in your head, it'll basically be what I've be what I've already been showing with the damn buster. Enemies will go flying. And that's why I'm not a huge fan of this weapon. I'm sorry for such a long intro there, but ultimately it's pretty low damage as far as, you know, launchers go, and it's really, really high impact, which, as I've demonstrated with the encampment, is actually not really what you want. I prefer lower impact launchers because it sort of keeps everything together uh, because, you know, the more enemies you have in a single explosion, the more efficient you're being with your shots, you know what I mean? So keeping everything in one place is kind of a good way to do it, and that's where the deatomizer sort of gets away with all this because it, you know, sprays out and hits everything at once. So... The Dam Buster is really, really good for knocking enemies around, and I mentioned that it's easy because you don't need an impact perk, you don't need to worry about it, you're good to go. And then, of course, if you want much, much more consistency, I'm told that those very high-level smashers don't always get, you know, knocked around on the first shot. So, if you have those extra impact perks, you can get around that. Now, if you are trying to perk this weapon, let's talk about how you should do it. First and foremost, damage to afflicted and slowed and snared isn't going to do much help here because they're only going to be impacted after the first shot. That's when you start to afflict them or slow then slow and snare them. And then it's going to be the second and third shot where you're actually taking advantage of that bonus. And the only other options here, you know, you're not really getting a damage perk. You're not really getting anything. Damage to stunned and staggered sort of functions the same way. It's not going to do anything initially, but once they're stunned and staggered, you can, you know, hit them again. So if they're laying on the ground, you'll do extra damage that could be really really nice that's definitely a good option i've opted for damage to miss monsters and bosses because that's sort of the preferred way to go i think those are the targets that are really going to give you a hassle and those are the ones that you want to do a lot of extra damage to again we're specking this for damage in this case because you can't really spec it for impact as i said if you're not trying to kill and you really don't even care double reload or uh yeah double reload up here and don't even don't even think about it i mean you could just do crit rating if you're for some reason trying to not kill the enemy that you're hitting i don't know and of course if you're going to run a crit build you're going to want crit rating and crit damage you're not going to want to do one or the other that being said if you're an insane person and want to run totally rocking out with the damn buster then double crit damage is kind of the way to go double crit damage reload have a good time obviously as i said this fifth perk is sort of a variable i think the damage route is certainly more consistent you can go double reload damage or double damage reload either or is up to you again if you're just, you know, I'm not going to repeat myself too much, but if you're just trying to do damage, you might want to do one reload perk, and if you're just trying to knock stuff around, two reload might be the best way to go. I think, personally, you know, based on my perspective of the situation, I think the sixth perk that I got, the new one, the stunning or knocking back deals extra damage, it's not a lot of extra damage. 12 base damage at my level is annoying to calculate. We tried and maybe failed. If somebody has a specific number, hey, comment down below, but it's my understanding that it's like tens of thousands. You know, it's like maybe 60k on the high end i that that's that seemed to be what it came out to when we tried to do the math so it's really not a substantial amount but it's a lot more than affliction or slowed and steered with deal seeing as currently as of recording affliction isn't really ticking for that much damage every time that it does damage so it's going to take a long time you know that full six seconds will do like thirty thousand. it'll take a long time to catch up to what this does every single shot because with the damn buster you will be stunning or knocking them back you're not going to be stunning them because that doesn't really do it but you will be knocking them back every single hit when you're firing with the damn buster and i want that to be known and then of course finally the element why are you doing physical i don't know I mean, you want to do the most damage to physical enemies, which will be usually smashers. They're not always physical, but definitely the, um, the zappy faces and the takers. They will definitely be physical every time. You can go energy on this if you want to affect everything equally. Not a bad way to go. Or if you want to have one for every single element, then obviously you can just pick whichever element works for you. If you don't know how elements work, I'll link my elements guide in the description below. That'll hopefully clear up all of your questions. But yeah, that's the damn buster. It's not maybe an exceptional weapon, but it's a fan favorite because even being one of the old original hydraulic weapons, it's actually really 
quite useful if you're specifically using it for those circumstances. Now, I did mention that it's a hydraulic weapon, so if you already didn't know, you can go down to the collection book and just grab a copy today. You can research it right here. You might have to use a little bit of flux. I highly recommend going purple flux and then checking the six perk, making sure it's what you want. If you want to slow and snare enemies or if you want to afflict them, you might want to make sure that you get the right six perk. As I've mentioned, it doesn't really matter at all what the six perk is because it's not going to make a huge difference as to the performance performance of this weapon. If you guys enjoyed the video and you guys want to support the channel, feel free to use code MISTA at your checkout. You can become a channel member here if you guys want to support me over on YouTube and, you know, get the nice emotes down in the comments below. You might see me replying with some of those emotes if the situation, you know, stands for it. If you guys want to follow me on Twitch, my streams are awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, have a nice day. <laughs> Do 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 do